Welcome to Systems of Equations, Introducing Matrices. I've been doing some scribbling here, as you can see, and uh, I've got some equations that uh, you might have seen before, all these in black here. Um, and uh, where do they come from? Well, that's the idea of algebra, isn't it? We introduce a letter to stand for a missing number or quantity in order to solve a puzzle, maybe like a puzzle like this, or this one over here, and that gives rise to a mathematical sentence. And uh, then we try to uh, solve that equation to find the unknown. And then, of course, it reaches into other areas of science and maths where we construct formulae. And, of course, they are types of equations equating things as well. And uh, you might like to try this puzzle down here later on, just pause it as I go on, because um, this is an interesting one, just to uh, remind yourself of how to use algebra. Uh, by the way, the answer is not $750 here, it's not 750 You might like to have a look at that problem. The boss has a $1,000 bonus for you, but whatever he gives you has to be taxed at 25%. How much do you get? without him going over the thousand dollars and you want the maximum out of that thousand dollars you can get anyway i'll leave you with that right up the top here can you see it this one up here this is a uh, a problem here uh, which consists of two equations and uh, that's called a system of course it's a two by two system and you've seen that before in uh, more junior maths uh, where you were solving simultaneous equations perhaps so we're going to be getting into systems of equations and uh, so uh, let's go down now don't forget your problem though you might try to work on that uh, just pause it and uh, then come along after anyway coming down here now let's have a look at uh, some systems of equations. Here's a two by two system because there are two equations in two unknowns. And we could look at that from a graphical point of view, graphing uh, the two equations on the Cartesian coordinate system. And uh, we could find the point here, 14.9, that uh, lies on both lines and therefore, if you like, satisfies both equations. Here's another two by two system here. And what about this one? This is a three by three system, three equations in three unknowns. And we call uh, these linear systems, that one it's obvious, linear system, a system of linear equations, because they plot the straight lines. We also call this a linear system. Um, we're not going to go into uh, a graphical interpretation of this in this course, and uh, these do not plot as straight lines in a uh, 3D system. They're actually planes in space, but we're still going to call them linear because the highest power of the variable there is 1 for x, y, and z, so they still are a linear system. I've got an interesting tidbit down here for you. I don't know whether you can see how um, mathematics could be used to balance this chemical equation if we didn't know how many of each of these molecules uh, we needed to react to produce this number of molecules in our products. Um, we'll have a look at that later on, just in a minute, and uh, see how maths can help out there. All right, so let's come down and uh, have a look at the situations where uh, you can actually use mathematics to create a system of linear equations to solve a problem. So from Hayes, Hayes and Harris now, and you might uh, have a copy of that just to follow through here, we've got uh, allocating resources in manufacturing. Well, resources, they, they could be uh, on a production line, the assembly, uh, painting, uh, parceling up X, Y and Z there, something like that, and we need to balance that out to fit into the hours in a day that those are operating, those uh, production lines or various paint lines and so on. Distribution of prizes in sporting events. How are we going to divide up $1 million in a ratio between first, second and third or fourth, etc.? X, Y and Z could be useful there. Balancing diets, protein, carbohydrate and fat. What about that in different foods? How are we going to balance our diet? Could use X, Y and Z again, or perhaps need more variables there. And in economics, profits and costs and so on, uh, 
could be uh, several variables involved there as well. And then the last one, I've just popped over here, the balancing chemical equations. Uh, just talked about that with you. If you didn't know A, B and C, so you didn't know what um, the number of molecules in the uh, reactants and products was, you could say, well, in a chemical reaction of this type, there's no loss of matter. So the number of calcium atoms uh, going in as uh, reactants, there's A, lots of calcium there, and B there, have to equal, uh, there's two uh, calcium uh, atoms in this silicate product, so it'll be 2C, and there's 3 here in this oxide, and so it's 3D. And those you can't lose calcium atoms in this reaction, so they must all add up. And then you can go through aluminium atoms, starts off with 2A and over here uh, we've got 2 there and D lots of it so it's 2D and so on you can do it for each one so we have a system here with 5 unknowns 5 unknowns here and we've got 5 equations we should be able to solve that so uh, we're going to go on and find out how to do that that's the purpose of this uh, presentation and uh, here, here's a little puzzle problem, not a very practical one, but that sort of things that you've done before. Uh, I've got hens and sheep. There are 23 heads and 64 legs. How many hens and sheep have you got? So uh, if you have X hens and Y sheep, total heads is simply they've all got one, so adding them up must be 23. But the hens have got two legs, the sheep have got four, so 2x plus 4y equals 64. And we have a pair of equations, which we call simultaneous equations, of course, because we want to solve them together, uh, because each of them are to do with the same thing, x hens and y sheep. Let's come down and have a look at what the meaning of a solution is. So uh, here we are, solutions satisfy equations. And here we've been doing some checking. If x is 14 and y is 9, and you stick it in place of x and y in here, does it work? 14 plus 9, yes, it gives 23. What if you put x is 14 in there and y is 14 in there? Just check it. Yep, it checks to be... 64. So it actually does solve that solution x is 14 and y equals 19. When you stick in the left hand side of the equation in both cases, you get the right hand side. So it does solve the equations simultaneously at the same time. So you can check your solutions like that. Now later on we're going to try and uh, work out a good way of solving the equation, but at the moment I want you to practice um, checking a solution. So let's come down and have a look at this example from Hayes, Hayes and Harris. So this is a 3x3 th three three system. So uh, does, does 1, 4 and 9 solve this system? Is it a solution? So if we put those numbers in the left hand side in place of x, y and z of the first equation we get these numbers which is 5, which checks. If we put those values x y and z in the second equation we find that it doesn't come it comes to 45 so this one should come to 17 so it doesn't work so we don't have to go on with the next one of course because we want a simultaneous solution as full, soon as one falls over then that's not going to work for all three therefore we won't bother with the last one let's go on to the second one using 1, 2 and 3 putting in place of x y and z in the first equation yes it checks in the second equation in place of x y and z yes you get the 17 and the third equation for x y and z in there so we're just checking the substitution of these possible values and seeing whether they are a solution so then the last one neg 41, 29 and north for x y and z putting them in x, y and z holes in the equations, yes they all work. So do you get the idea of how to check whether something is a solution? Let's come down and I'll get you to try some problems here. <coughs> so there's 9A1, question 1, 2 and 3, and you might have a go 
at that in a minute. What I'm going to do is scroll these through and show you the solutions at the bottom, and then you can rewind and uh, pause presentation and do them. So uh, then there's question four, and we'll just go down and uh, see the solutions down here. Uh, question one, two, and three. And we'll just come down a bit and get four here at the end. Uh, just there. Okay, so there's question four just there at the end. So you can rewind the presentation now and uh, try the problems and you come down and look at the solutions. Let's go on, go on and see how we can get solutions. So uh, I've uh, scribbled some uh, problems here and uh, do you recognise there what they are? So over here, this is the hens problem and this is just another problem with a 3x3 three three system. Let's see if we can remember how to do this problem here. Now for the purposes of uh, this work, because we want to go on and find a neat way of doing this, we're going to use the process of elimination. So what we do there, let's just go back up there now, um, so we'll use a process of elimination and what we're going to do is we'll write the equations as equation 1 and equation 2 and what we're going to do now is to say well we're trying to eliminate uh, one of the variables. So let's work on x. So let's multiply equation 1 by 2 and write it underneath. 2x plus 2y equals 46. And we can call that equation 3. It's simply a multiple. Multiplying both sides by the same thing, uh, by the constant, will not change the meaning of the equation. So then what do we do? Well, if we subtract that equation, we'll get no x's there, 0, 4y take 2y is 2y equals 64 take 46. Can you uh, work that out? You might need a calculator there. But um, that's 18. So we've got 18. Dividing both sides by 2, we have y is 9. OK, so we can try and get rid of that. So y is 9 then what are we going to do? Well, we could substitute y is 9 into the original equation, into equation 1, so we'd have x plus 9 equals 23, so x is 23 take 9 is 14. So the solution is um, 14 hens and 9 sheep. OK, uh, now you should always state the answer in a context there, if there is a context for the question. So do you get the idea it's combining equations to eliminate uh, one of the unknowns, either x or y, and um, then substituting back? Well, this, question, this system over here is a 3x3 three three system, and uh, can we do the same sort of thing there? We haven't done this sort of thing before, so let's label these equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. OK, so uh, what, what can we do? Well, let's look at equation 1 and 2, and we'll write them out again. x plus 2y plus z equals 6. x take y plus 4z equals neg 6. So if we subtract, so this is equation 1 and equation 2. If we subtract the equations there, x take x is 0 there. 2y take neg y is 2y plus y is 3y. z take 4z is neg 3z equals 6. Take neg 6, 6 plus 6 is 12. So we have now... Um, Dividing both sides by 3, y take z equals 4. OK, so we could call that equation 4 if you like. Now what could we do? Well, we could write down, let's say, equation 1 again. 
right this is his equation one and then equation three uh, 2x plus 3y take z equals 12 equation three now if we multiply equation one by two and write it underneath 2x plus 4y plus 2z equals 12 and call that equation five we're up to now if again we subtract this 2x take uh, x is no x 3y take 4y is neg y neg z take 2z is neg 3z and 12 take 12 is oops no that, that's not right is it? i haven't doubled that one so let's just check that in there that should be 24 shouldn't it doubling everything there in equation 3 equals 24 12 take 24 is neg 12 so I've got another equation here let's call it equation 6 now what can we do here well question, uh, equation 4 and 6 we could now write down let's write those down y take z equals 4 and neg y neg y let's get that right take 3z equals neg 12 so if we this time added those two equations so this is equation 4 and this is equation 6 if we add them there'll be no y's right, this time y plus neg y neg z plus neg 3z is neg 4z equals 4 plus neg 12 is neg 8 oh we've done it We've eliminated it back to just z, so dividing by neg 4, z would be 2. So the process can work for um, three unknowns. Let's just go back up again now. Uh, too far here. Let's go just here. Uh, so here, if we have that z equals 2, now what can we do? Well, we can put it into this equation or uh, where's our other one here our equation five the six sorry so put it in either of those and find out why so let's do that now so uh, we'll take equation four so i'll just put down here sub into four and uh, if we do that we've got y take two equals four y is equal to 6 so the method seems to work uh, with 3 by 3s as well so what could we then do uh, well we still need to find um, x so uh, we'll go right back up the top here x plus 2y plus z equals 6 so if x plus 2y plus z equals 6 if we now do that let's uh, put the numbers in x plus 2 times y is 12 plus z is 2 so x plus 14 equals 6 x equals 6 to 8 14 which is neg 8 so while we're all on the one page here our solution is the solution is x equals neg 8 y equals 6 and z equals 2 okay so can you see the process we're going to summarize this in a minute and uh, see uh, if we can uh, set up a series of steps because uh, this was a bit complicated combining two pairs of equations getting rid of all but um, um, one variable and so on is there a neater way i wonder we are using, however, the basic idea of adding and subtracting equations in their multiples to eliminate one variable at a time, if possible, and come down to a solution. OK, well, let's come down now and have a look at what we've just done and a, a quicker way, perhaps, of doing it. Um, OK. So here from Hayes, Hayes and Harris, they've summarised ni nicely what we've just done. The equations can be interchanged without affecting the solutions. Do you believe that? Well, it doesn't matter which one you work with first, does it? 
so uh, it doesn't matter uh, the order in which you use them. You uh, Can you uh, multiply both sides of an equation by a number? Yes, well, you don't want to multiply it by zero because the equation would disappear. But uh, you can multiply both sides of an equation by a constant. That will keep the balance or the meaning of the equation the same. Um, and you can add and subtract equations because x, y and z always mean the same thing in each of the three equations. Uh, we, we take it that way uh, because we're solving them simultaneously. We are saying x and y and z uh, have the same value everywhere same value wherever they occur okay so that idea is important all right so is there a better way ah here we are matrices now a matrix is an array of numbers a matrix matrices is the plural a matrix is an array of numbers so do we really need to have x y's and z's everywhere let's have a look and see what we can do with this so let's detach the, uh, the numbers that are important. So what are the numbers that are important? 2, there's 1y, one 1x, one and neg 3, and of course the neg 1 and 17. So we're going to make up what's called an augmented matrix. It's augmented. It's got the crucial coefficients here augmented or added to with the actual answers over on the right. So we put a line down here to distinguish that. It can be a dash line or a continuous line like that. So we've got here the important entries in our matrix, and a matrix is an array of numbers. Here, just don't lose sight of the fact that that top row means 2x plus y equals neg 1, and the next row means 1x take 3y equals 17. So when you use a matrix form, and it won't necessarily always mean equations like this, um, then remember what is going on there. Okay, so what can we do? We can play with the rows, because what are rows? They are equations. What can we do? What we said before. You can take them in any order. You can interchange them. You can multiply through a row. You can add and subtract rows, because the rows here are equations right? don't forget the meaning of this matrix or this set of detached coefficients or set of numbers a matrix is an array of numbers ok so um, they're saying here this isn't a bad trick down here um, because you can refer back to the um, first row and use it it's often handy to put um, an equation with a 1 in that top left hand corner we'll see this later on when we come to 3x3 three three systems we're going to use this condensed notation this matrix form to, to handle those big 3x3s three three more easily ok so now what are we going to do we're going to try and do what we did before and that was to combine equations so that we eliminate an X or Y. So uh, what we're going to do is here's our matrix, our condensed form, and we want to get a zero in there. So the bottom line reads as 7Y equals neg 35. Don't forget, rows are equations here. Rows are equations. Okay. So how are we going to do that? Well, remember what we did before. If in this row 2, uh, we replace it by row 2 take 2 row 1. Well, let's do that. We write down row 2 and minus 2 row 1, multiplying through row 1 by neg 2, and then adding them. Or you could do this. Um, you could put here just 2 row 1. So this would be 2... Um, neg 6 and uh, plus 7 uh, plus 34 sorry so here you could do it that way and then take them away okay they've got neg 2 row 1 and added them but you could do this it'll come to the same thing 1 take neg 6 plus 7 neg 1 take 34 neg 35 so uh, that that's the idea you have to keep your wits about you to think, well, what we were doing before was getting rid of X, 
down in that corner. So we don't have to think about that all the time. We just want a zero down there. And what does this mean now? Remember, rows are equations back up here. So the bottom row means 7y equals neg 35, or y is neg 5. So what do we then do? We substitute it back into the first equation, and so x is 2. Or into the first row, if you like. Remember, rows are equivalent to equations in this augmented matrix situation. Augmented matrix. Okay, now... Um, they made a comment here you might say well this is harder than what I do just with putting the equations under each other but you saw what I did with the 3x3 three three system there are a lot of equations floating around there maybe this condensed form is going to be more valuable for bigger systems do you think, are you thinking what about 4x4s four what about 5x5s five five ok, we could have bigger problems and this method, this matrix method is very expandable and matrices uh, methods generally are and uh, that's the idea of forming an array or a matrix of numbers let's go down and have a look at an example so here we are use elementary row operations so this is called uh, row operations uh, which really just adding and subtracting equations and doing what we would normally do so let's first of all make an augmented matrix so that's detaching 2, 3 and 4 putting it there, 2, 3 and 4, then 5, 4 and 17. We've got the important array of numbers, our matrix, our augmented matrix. Now, we want to get a 0 here. Why? Because that's eliminating the x. Remember, rows are equivalent to equations. So if we want to remove a variable and just get one left, here it is down here, that's got to be naught. So how are you going to make a naught? So you've got to think about this. Replace row 2 by 5 times row 1, take 2 times row 2. It's a common denominator idea, isn't it? Common denominator idea. So if I multiply the top row, uh, top row by 5, I have 10, 15 and 20, and then I take away... 2 times row 2, which would be neg 10, neg 8, neg 34. And so it's knocked it out. So you're focusing over here on what to do to these two to produce a zero. Just the same as working with equations. Multiply equation 1 by 5 and take away uh, twice equation 2, or rows. Remember, rows are equivalent to equations. So therefore interpreting the row 2 what does it really mean it's an equation it means 7y equals neg 14 so y is neg 14 divided by 7 is neg 2 ok then you've got to substitute it back into the first equation and solve and then state your solution um, and you should really check the solution in both of the original equations here just as we were doing earlier OK, now, in setting out, could you notice this squiggle over here? We don't put equals, we put uh, here, which has the same solution as or is equivalent to, uh, and so we set that up to link between our first matrix and our change matrix, uh, where we have produced that zero. It's quite a neat little method, uh, particularly as you get into bigger and bigger systems. So let's have a go then at some down here before we do that can you think about what we're doing with 2x2 two two systems they are plotting as straight lines these 2x2's two two you could do it graphically ok the difficulty with doing it graphically of course um, is unless it's an integer solution you will probably not be able to find it accurately on a graph but anyway if they are straight lines and uh, that's what we're doing here with 2x2 two two system what could happen? they could intersect, they could be parallel or they could be coincident if two lines are intersecting then you'll have one point and be a unique solution if two lines are parallel let's have a look at what makes them parallel here 2 and 3, they both got the same ratio 
of coefficients in x and y so when you rearrange it to y equals mx plus c they will have the same slope m which here would be neg two thirds but look they have different constants down there so they're going to have different y intercepts when you go to y equals mx plus c form and so although they are parallel same slope they will go through different um, y intercepts they won't they won't intersect there'll be no solution what about if the lines are the same as each other well here you are two to three is the same as four to six so they're definitely parallel in the same ratio but uh, here if you double this equation you get this one it's exactly equivalent equals the f equation one doesn't it simply doubled on both sides so it's coincident or they are the same line lying on top of each other if you like infinitely many points of uh, points of intersection infinite many infinitely many solutions so that's important okay so a little bit of revision needed here on the idea of mx plus c where the slope here is determined by the numbers in front of uh, y and x let's just do that other one over there 2x plus 3y equals 1 can you remember 3y equals 1 take 2x therefore y equals a third take two thirds x so the numbers in front of x and y these numbers here determine the slope so if they are in the same ratio you can see here the two lines are going to have the same slope so thinking about that so this just gives you a bit more depth or interpretation of the situation as you try and solve a two by two system all right so um, here are the first three questions and I'll do the same thing here I want you to create matrices for all of these augmented matrices and then try to work through the solution using that um, now I'm going to uh, scroll down to each of these including the solutions then you can come back and pause it so question four and five then um, uh, so you could pause it there later on then come down and let's have a look at the solutions okay so uh, down left hand side here question one a b and c we'll just finish that off a b and c and just coming up here question two uh, two and three and question four and then question five a and b there all right so uh, the idea now is to rewind the presentation uh, pause it at various stages have a look and come down and check your solutions okay i'm going to go on now uh, let's have a look at a variation here getting a little bit more interesting so uh, here uh, if you don't have a number there that second equation is incomplete um, we're going to uh, say k is a constant so uh, what do the solutions look like when you have a, uh, a incomplete equation so first of all take the numbers 1, 3 and 5 make up your augmented matrix numbers 4, 12 and k now what we need to do is to find an equivalent matrix we're going to try and get a zero in this position so we spot that if we have row 2 minus 4 row 1 right 4 take 4 times 1 that will work so let's write down row 2 that's 4 12 and k and take 4 times row 1 which is neg 4 neg 12 and neg 20 or remember you might like to put neg out the front for 12 and 20 and take it away either way uh, for 12k like that or multiply it by a negative and then add them if you like so um, what do you notice oh that's what you notice that's what you notice the other term goes zero as well so the bottom line says 
Remember, rows are equivalent to equations. The bottom line says 0x plus 0y equals k take 20. So, if, uh, if we have, uh, what, if k is not equal to 20, we have 0x plus 0y, that's 0, equaling non-zero. So put a number in there, other than 20, and it becomes a silly statement. Let's put in 10, for example. 0x plus 0y, if k was 10, 10 take 20 is neg 10. That's not possible, they've said it's absurd. This is impossible. 0x plus 0y can't come to a number. So we can't have a, a solution in that situation if k is not equal to 20. If k is equal to 20, we have 0 equals 0, which is true, reading that bottom line. 0x plus 0y would equal 0 if k equals 20. Put 20 in there. So um, this means that you only have one functional equation left, x plus 3y equals 5. And so uh, what's the solution? Any points on that line, isn't it? Okay, because the other line's bombed, if you like. You've got 0x plus 0y uh, for k equals 20 equals 0. So uh, therefore, any points on this remaining line, x plus 3y, would satisfy the equation. So here, uh, what we usually do is this little trick here. Let uh, y equal t, and x is 5 take 3t, and so we can describe the general pattern of the point. So we could say the solution is x plus 3y equals 5, but we, a solution usually means a statement about x and y. So the solution should be a statement like this. We can't give a specific value to x and y because there's an infinite number of them. It's any point on that line. So if we say let y be t, at least we're explaining the relationship of the points set of x's that go with those y's. That's the idea. Can you see, coming right up the top here, why we had infinite solutions? Multiply the top line, the top equation by 4 we get that uh -huh. so if you have and this was k in the second equation wasn't it so in other words for k equals 20 equation 1 is equivalent to equation 2 so one becomes a multiple of the other. Therefore, from before, we said they would be coincident. They'd be the same line. Therefore, yes, there would be infinite solutions. All right, so these, this is interesting to think about the possible values of K. Come down and let's have a go. So here, uh, I think we can get all three on there, six, seven, and eight. So uh, this is, this is uh, food for thought now. You have to think about what's going on in each of these. Remember, rows are equivalent to equations. OK, so uh, I'm going to show you the uh, solutions to these. Come back and have a go, or you can pause it now, please yourself. I'll come down here and... 6 and 7, we'll just show 6 and 7 there, if we can get them, no, it's a 6, or well, 8's visible there, and there's the rest of 7. Okay, so uh, you can come and look at those, 6, 7 and 8. Uh, rewind the presentation now, have a go at those uh, 3, and see what you make of it. Alright, I'm going to go on now. Okay, so obviously you've learnt new skills here and um, the calculator can do this as well. I'm deviating away from what Hayes, Hayes and Harris here has suggested. The calculator is capable of producing a, a uh, augmented matrix, well, you can add in an augmented matrix and then row reduce it and it's called the row reduced echelon form when you produce uh, a matrix where you have, let's say, entries here and um, 
then a zero and a one here and an entry here so uh, the row reduced echelon form means what we've just been doing uh, usually we go try and get a 1 here we're not going to bother with that and I'm not going to bother with looking at the calculator doing this because uh, it's pretty uh, time consuming the calculator has a different technology could you come over here and have a look um, in the menu if you highlight equa mode there then you can select the type of equation and here it is simultaneous so you hit uh, F2, F1, sorry, F1 in there, and then uh, it asks you for the no a number of unknowns. So you can have two, like um, we've just been doing a two by two system, or three, or four, or five, or six. So here, if you chose um, F1, that's two unknowns, you then have this window. Notice the format in which they want you to put the equation. Uh, a N X plus B N Y equals C N. A N, um, B N, and C N are indicating that you put in variable uh, values there for the coefficients. The equation must be in that form. So uh, I, I'll uh, give you an example. If I was trying to uh, enter X plus Y equals 23 from before, I have to enter 1, 1, and 23. So if we come down here a little bit, uh, that's what I've then done. Entered in there, 1, hit enter, 1 and 23. So it will highlight the box. Let's go back up here again. It will highlight that box. You enter 1 and hit, um, hit enter, and then it will cross across and you enter the two equations. If you then, coming down here again, if you then hit solve, it will uh, highlight the X and then the Y. Uh, so 14 and 9 are your solutions from technology there. Uh, OK, so I think Equa mode on the calculator uh, is the only way to go with technology here. You wouldn't use row operations uh, unless they required it in a problem, and then uh, otherwise you'd use this uh, quicker form of technology. So please note that one. OK, let's go and do um, um, some with the calculator then. So here we are, solve using a calculator. So I'd like you to go to Equa mode on the calculator, uh, on the Casio, and uh, check these solutions there. All right, well, I guess you've been waiting for it. And um, here it is now. Uh, can we handle a 3x3 three three system? using this new matrix technique where we're just detaching the coefficients and uh, remember rows are equivalent to equations in the augmented matrix form okay so here we have it what do you do well same as before you detach the important numbers there make a row for each equation and that's called the augmented matrix form a matrix is an array of numbers, remember. OK, so what we're going to try and do, can you see what our aim would be? Oh, this time we have to get a zero in two positions in the bottom line. Why? Well, because we've got then just the bottom line reads, I don't know where they've got it down here, H, Z equals I, so Z will be equal to I over H. Remember, rows are equations. What would this row mean at the end? It would mean E, Y plus F, Z equals G. So we've gradually eliminated down to this row 3 all but the Z coefficient. And then in the next row, Y and Z. So we'll be able to take that and back, back substitute. OK, so we need these zeros in these positions so that we gradually can work backwards and solve for each of them. A lot neater than the equations I showed you before. So here we are, we want a triangle of zeros in the bottom left-hand corner, and they're explaining there what I've got here, how to solve for it. All right, we'll have a look at the steps in that in a minute. So coming down here, some observations. 
if h is not equal to naught we have z equals i over h we've just done that one up here and then you can substitute back sub back into previous equations sub back into row 2 and then row 1 and you could have a unique solution that means a single value of x y and z that satisfies the equations however if h equals naught and i isn't naught then the bottom line reads this naught x plus naught y plus naught z equals something equals some number this is inconsistent or impossible they put absurd it's impossible and we say that there is no solution and the system is inconsistent so you can't have noughts times everything to give a number so uh, if you have a number in here it's not possible if h is naught and i is naught is that possible naught x plus naught y plus naught z equals naught yes we just saw that before it means the last equation is not nonsense equation uh, 3 has slipped out offers no info about the solution okay so here that means there's going to be an infinite number of solutions you're going to have many solutions and uh, then we're going to write that as we did before let z equal t and write x and y in terms of t because we will still have two equations left but so what we say here equation from row one and row two still offer info about the relationship between x y and z how do we detect that relationship we let z equal t and then back substitute and get x and y in terms of t remembering what we're trying to do we're trying to find a solution so because the bottom equation bombs if you like doesn't mean to say you've got no information about the solution the other two equations are still there offering information so just because you haven't got a z from equation three doesn't mean to say you can't let z be t and back substitute and find the relationship about the solution the x the xness the yness and the zness of it all let's go down and see if we can see one in action now so here's the solution to this three by three system and we detach the coefficients one three neg one fifteen etc and now what we're going to try and do is to produce a zero in this position first so that's number one or this position either of those one or two doesn't matter which you do first um, but then you'll need to combine these two rows afterwards to get a zero here without disturbing these zeros so the idea there is to create those zeros first now I disagree with the book here I think each time you do something you should only be uh, one row operation and then change the next row they've changed two at one time here let's see what they've done so they've said let's make row two row two minus two row one so here's row two minus 2 row 1 is up there multiplying this row by negative 2 and you can see when you add them yes you create that 0 in the same step here all here together they have then said well let's get a 0 in row 3 because row 3 take row 1 row 3 take row 1 would actually give you this one here so writing out row 3 take row one we would get the required zero now i suggest you write this as two different steps just rewrite the matrix with its equivalent sign there and with one one of these done and then do another line do the other one be careful this is not a bad idea to show working rather than trying to do it in your head because some of them later on become quite complicated okay so now what are we going to do to get this 
last zero, well, we can only work with row three and row two. Because if we start playing with row one, it's got a one in the first hole here, first entry is a one, and that's going to disturb our zeros that we've already got here. So we can only play with these two. So what are you going to do? You've got three and neg 17, oops sorry, we haven't done that yet, uh, go back up here, we've got um, these two to look at to remove that neg 4. So this is a common denominator idea, we multiply row 3 by 5, which is what we've got there in row 2, take 4 times row 2, they'll both come to 20s, so I call this the common denominator principle. Okay, so you multiply one row uh, by the other, if you like, by the coefficient of the other, and vice versa. So you're going to get the 20s in there. Notice the zeros are unchanged, so we haven't disturbed that first zero. So five row three, putting it all down there, and neg four row two. So we now have our final entry, just remembering rows are equivalent to equations so what we're going to say here is what, what's this bottom row say naught x plus naught y takes 17 z equals 17 Dividing both sides by 17 z is neg 1 and then substituting it back same as before into row 2 it's naught x, so there's a naught out the front, take 5y plus 3z is neg 23, putting in z is neg 1, there it is there, 3 times neg 1 is neg 3, we've solved for y. Okay, so then we can substitute it back again in row 1, can you see the idea? Nice and neat with packaging, putting in y and z now, as those two values getting x. So we have a unique solution. There's only one possible solution to this set of 3x3 uh, three three equations. All right, so um, perhaps we might put the steps down now. Um, what we're trying to do is um, a zero in first position of row 2, 0 in first position of row 3, and you can do either of those first, and then you use only row 2 and row 3 to get 0 in second position of row 3, because then you'll only have one variable left in row three, two in row two, and three in row three, and you just go backwards up there. Now it doesn't matter which way round you do these two, but we must use only row two and row three to get that second zero in row three, so we don't lose the first one, we don't want to disturb that. All right, do you get the idea? Let's come down and have a look. So here are three questions. And you can pause it now and have a go or come down and that look at the solutions, have a go later on. Um, so we'll go down now and look at those solutions. Uh, we'll just do it uh, more slowly there. So here, uh, question one, part A. Just go down one part B. And then part C. And, of course, up the top here we had question three. All right, so you might go back, pause the presentation and have a go and see uh, how it looks. I'm going to go on now. All right, so uh, this is getting more interesting because we're going to ask you to actually develop your own system of equations, a 3x3 three three system. And you start to see some practical uses now. Rent a car has three different makes of vehicles, PQ and R for hire. These cars are located at yard A, yard B, on either side of the city. 
Some cars are out being rented. In total, they have 150 cars. At yard A, they have 20% of P. That's a, that's a model. 40% of Q and 30% of R. And that comes to 46 cars. At yard B, they have 40%. 20% and 50% and 54 cars and so how many of each car type do they have well let's have a look there's 150 cars in total so X plus Y plus Z is 150 now if we say overall they have X of P Y of Q and Z of R so 40, 20% of P 2 tenths 40% of Q and 3% of R in yard A comes to 46. So we can actually, by using X, Y and Z of the each type of car, we can actually write an equation for that. And simplifying it by multiplying through by 10, and then doing the same thing here, 40% of P is 4 tenths of X, 20% of Q, 2 tenths of Y, 50% of R, 5 tenths of X equals 54, multiplying through again by 10. OK, so ah, this looks pretty shocking when you look at all these three equations, but not when you use an augmented matrix. Should be getting pretty friendly to you now. So detaching the coefficients for each equation and making up that matrix. Then, of course, if we have our row operations now, we'll try for a zero here, first of all. And so row two becomes row two minus two row one. OK, can you see that here? And they actually haven't shown the steps over here. So you might do that. So row two is two, four, three and four sixty minus 2 row 1 is 2, 2, 2 and 300 so if we subtract those we get 0, 2, 1 and 160 ok and I've suggested you do this in two steps not all at once let's work out the working line for this this is row 3 which is 4, 2, 5 and 5, 40 minus 4 row 1 so we'll minus and in here put 4 row 1 which is 4 4 4 and 600 so taking this away is 0 2 take 4 neg 2 1 and neg 60 so we get that entry there so the working step is useful to put it to the side um, Hayes, Hayes and Harris have left it out in this particular case ok and then the final one remember putting equivalent to or has the same solution as to get this last one now we want to uh, look at how to remove this neg 2 so it'll be row. we can only use row 3 and row 2 so row 3 plus row 2 can you see that if we add those two rows together that gives 0 let's do it over here um, row 3 is 2 1 160 and row 3 is neg 2 1 and neg 60 so if we add the rows now we get 0 there and 2 and 100 OK, so we've got our final row in re row reduced echelon form. And what's a row mean? It means an equation. So it's really 0x plus 0y plus 2z equals 100. So we can just say z is 50. And then we back substitute into row 2. This is row 2 in equation form. 2y plus um, uh, one, uh, it? one Z, so yep, so it's 50 equals 160, and dividing through, and then of course we can back substitute into row one, and it's got all the variables still left there, so we substitute into each of them, they haven't shown this, Y is 55, 
Z is 50 so if we take that away we get 45 so then our answer must particularly in mathematics uh, like this be contextual don't give the answer as x equals y equals z equals we've introduced that as our tool so we now have to explain what the answer to their question was how many of each car type they had this is exciting stuff you're going to see a lot of uses for this uh, as we go on now so uh, come down and here's a chance, question four and five, to actually introduce your variable um, and uh, state what it's going to be. So right at the beginning of any problem, you'll usually say let equals y equals and z equals in each case there, and then try to solve for it. So... Um, Okay, so um, let's look at that then um, in each of these cases. Now, I think uh, sometimes they give you a hint, other times you have to work it out for yourself. So uh, I think if we give you a chance here to just pause that in a minute, so we just go 4 and 5 and 6 and 7... Eight, we'll leave and come to nine and then we have some solutions so you can either pause that or come back I'll go on and show you the solutions now four five and six and I don't know whether we can get this on seven there We just get this in eight and nine so it's interesting stuff you've really stepped up now in being able to solve systems of equations and the exciting thing is this matrix idea of creating an array of numbers and uh, we're going to do more with uh, matrices and coming back to further applications of um, uh, systems of linear equations and uh, the use of matrices and technology there so uh, I hope to catch you in the next presentation, but for now, it's cheers from me.